Come up here and get like a, a side view on here. So people make a big deal about like spinal alignment, and usually that's a bunch of baloney, but in this case it's kind of important. So when you normally, when somebody's normally standing here, sort of from the bottom up, if you've ever taught posture to people, this is going to be a little bit review. You got like ankles, knees, hips, those should all be in a nice straight line, right? No surprises here. Here's the cool thing about spines, is they're not perfectly straight, and you probably know this for sure already. So low back, you've got what's called lower doses, and that's when it bends sort of back like this. So if you could think like the, oh, was it the Instagram booty thing? That's, that's some hyper lower doses. So next time you see one of those, you can tell them exactly what they're suffering from. So there's a natural, there's a natural lower doses. You don't want to try to roll your hips under, like an old guy wearing, wearing oh, suspenders. A little bit, okay, he did a good job. So, if it was rolled under like that, go ahead and do that again. That, that kind of straightens it out, and that's not actually where you want it to be. That's not how it's for the spine. Let's go back to normal. It's gonna be a natural lordotic curve. Get up to the upper back here, has a natural slight kyphotic curve. So it curves a little bit forward. Now, if you've ever seen somebody with, who's been sitting at a desk all day, you're gonna notice them do the whole slouchy thing. Do the slouchy thing. All right, and then, Exaggerates that kyphotic curve. That's also not a great position to be in. You also don't want to overdo it. Do like the try hard. That's right. You don't want to do that either. That's not ideal. There's, there's going to be a natural curve. Now, right now, his center of gravity is in his belly button. It's usually right where it is, just right above your belly button, and it's centered above his base of support. All right, that's where that's what balance essentially means. If you were to shift his weight forward and his center of gravity was in front of his base of support, eventually he's going to topple over. Now here's the interesting thing when you add a drum. Go ahead and add a drum, and watch what happens to his center of gravity. <coughs> so he's adding about like 50 pounds on the front here, all right? So that, his center of gravity also includes a drum. It's gonna, that's gonna take it from in here to slightly forward. That makes sense so far? Now in order for him to keep that center of gravity over his base of support, he's going to have to shift his weight back. And you can kind of see he's doing a little bit of a gangster lean here. A little bit of a Michael Jackson type thing. A reverse Michael Jackson. Is that a reference that's still salient? You, you really reached backwards in time there. So, so he's got to do a little bit of a backward lean. Now here's where things get interesting, because there's a different strategies you can use to accomplish this. Now what the research says is the most common one, because it's the one that uses the least energy, is to just hyperextend here, to exaggerate the lordotic curve. So what that looks like, just kind of like let yourself sit into your hips a little bit. Uh, you're kind of doing the opposite. It's hard to, it's hard to do if you're, if you're not the, aware of it. So anyway, he's still, he's still accomplishing it a little bit. It, what, in fact, what he's done is the other thing you can do. So we'll start with that one. There's two different ways that people will try and accomplish this that are not good, and then there's one optimal one we're gonna go for. Do that again, what you just did. So what he did is he exaggerated the upper back kyphotic curve. And so that just kind of shifted everything a little bit back. And it works because he's not using a lot of muscle energy to hold this position. It doesn't work in that if he does this for more than about 10 minutes, he's gonna start feeling it a lot up in here and up in here. Especially like these guys, your traps, you ever had like a bunch of tension here, maybe even get a headache in the back of your head? That's what that's from typically. That's from those tight traps. These are one of the most commonly overly tight muscles. Still feeling good there? Yeah. Cool. <clears throat> All right. You've resumed your natural posture here. All right, now let's see, let's see if you can do this. So I want you to take your hips here and just sort of let them roll forward like that. Yeah, like that, cool. Now stand like that. This is the other strategy you'll see. Instead of exaggerating the kyphosis, he exaggerated the lower doses. And now, this is probably the more common one that you see. You can see people like go, ugh, like this. And so the nice thing about this is you're kind of hanging on your ligaments and joints, which is great because it doesn't need a lot of energy. But the bad thing is, after a while, that's going to create a lot of tension in here, and it can also lead to more serious injuries like stress fractures and stuff like that that we do not want. You actually see fairly, fairly often if you're not, uh, if you're not looking for them. So that's the other strategy. Um, yeah, it's pr primarily, this is where most of the back problems are going to come from. All right, so how do we fix that? <clears throat> Here's a couple little cues you can use when you're teaching folks. We're also going to do some exercises to help these. A couple cues you can use. I like to say the easiest way is probably saying, I want you to push your hips into the belly plate. So that, what that's gonna look like is you're gonna kind of roll your hips under like that. All right, so he's kind of pushing his hips into the belly plate. What that's doing, he takes his pelvis, which looks kind of like a bowl, and instead of being tilted forward like this, like he was, he's gonna tilt it this way, which kind of sets it more level. 
And this way, he's using his glutes and his abs to hold that weight instead of letting it hang on his vertebrae and his ligaments up here. All right? So that's for this girdle down here. For up here, I like to think, rotate the chest upward. Everybody can see Care Bears, you know what Care Bears are? All right, the Care Bear stare, where they have like the little light and goes like that. Or Iron Man, I guess, use that. So think of that Iron Man chest pointing up. So if you combine those two things, what it does is it puts that lord that lordotic curve back where it should be, puts that kyphotic curve where it should be, and instead of him sort of doing this, manipulating his posture to keep that center of gravity where it needs to be, he's taking his whole self, keeping the same posture, but just leaning back. And so now, that's pretty good. That look a little better. All right, and that's gonna be what we actually want. It's gonna take more muscle, Energy is gonna take more strength to hold that position, but it's gonna long-term be a lot healthier. It's gonna lead to less pain. And it also looks a little better too, so instead of being all like, he's actually looking nice and big and tall. So it's a lot of the same stuff you would tell any other musician, as far as standing up straight, having good posture, but now you know some of the details and also why those can actually be, those can actually affect your performance and pain levels. Cool? Yeah.